Today we will continue our snaps about this food deviation and I think we can start with the term of food alignment. The posterior aspect we can observe the valgus heel while from the medial aspect we can observe the menish of the medial arch. If we compare between both slides we can see that on the left side this is what's called food pronation. So base plano valgus or equino plano valgus is one of the most common deformity among the spastic children. Three major components are affected in this deformity, collapse of the medial arch, valgus, hind foot and the abduction of the forefoot. If we summarize the reasons for the equino plano valgus, we will find the spasticity of the peroneal muscles as well as the medial gastroc. And the story is started with the uncovering of the talus head. That aggravate the subluxation of the talus and displacement of the navicular bone. In other conditions, the story started with the plantar flexion of the calcaneus, as we can see here. This deformity causing gait deviations, callus formation, ulceration on the pressure point, and finally pain. Our examination usually started by observation from the static weight-bearing position. Then we are going for the clinical examination to examine the muscle tone assessment for the peroneal muscle, mainly peroneus longus. In addition also, we prefer to examine the calf muscle, mainly the gastric muscle for the spasticity and the tightness. The third item for the assessment is the radiological assessment, which is usually done from the weight-bearing for the anteroposterior and lateral view. Back again to the definition of the deformity, we mentioned that we have a collapse of the medial arch, so we have two angles to be measured by the radiology. Calcaneal pitch is the first angle, and this angle compromises at the first line extend over the inferior border of the calcaneus, while the transverse line represents the plantar aspect of the soft tissues of the foot. If there is a plano valgus, you will see that the angle is less than 17 degrees. The second angle between the talus and the first metatarsus. The first line passing through the axis of the talus bone, while the other line is passing over the axis of the first metatarsus. And here we can see that the angle is more than 4 degrees, which revealed plano valgus. For the forefoot segment, we have the angle measured by X-ray called talo first metatarsal from the AB view. We have a line passing through the middle of the talus and extended up to the first metatarsal. If the X of the first metatarsal is medial to the X of the talus, now we are talking about forefoot abduction. The third segment is the hind foot and we are measuring the lateral view of the talo calcaneal angle. So in this angle, the first line extended over the inferior surface of the calcaneus, while the other line passing through the mid of the talus. If we have a valgus heel, we will see that the angle is exceeding than 35. If we are talking about prevention, so we have to keep looking for the muscle imbalance. So as a physical therapist, we will keep looking for the elongation of the tight spastic muscle. Try to reduce the imbalance between the plantar and dorsiflexors as well as everter and inverter. Using overnight splint to elongate the calf muscle is one of the solutions. And definitely during walking, we need to use a custom-made ankle foot orthosis. Early Botox injection for the Veroneus longus and gastrocnemius is another solution to prevent or to deal with a flexible deformity. In other conditions, we prefer to add a serial casting after injection to try to elongate the muscle. There is no strong evidence about the rationale for the prevention, but if you started to work with the muscle imbalance too early, the pain and fixed deformity could be limited. Failure of the flexible deformity or in case of the fixed deformity, now we need to go for the surgical intervention. So now as a conclusion, 
considering the foot alignment is very essential during your examination of the patient. Clinical examination, radiological assessment, gait analysis are very essential component for clear overview. And try to work hard from the beginning to reduce the severity of this deformity.